It transpired that the victors could not carry Skybolt, so Avro began to adapt 72 Vulcans. These were the new Mark IIs, which had arrived in service at Christmas 1960. These aircraft had a more powerful engine, the uprated 16,000 pound Olympus, which could push the Vulcan up to Mark 0.98. An enlarged wing, which gave it an improved service ceiling of 55,000 feet, as well as a host of new electronic countermeasures equipment. But the RAF's plans went awry in November 1962, when President Kennedy cancelled the Skyboat. The problem with Skyboat is it's the most sophisticated weapon imaginable. We put a half a billion dollars into it already, and it's the most sophisticated weapon imaginable. Missile from a plane moving at Following much diplomatic and political maneuvering, Kennedy agreed to let the British have the submarine launched Polaris. The timetable for the demise of Britain's airborne nuclear deterrent was set. In the meantime, Bomber Command would continue with Blue Steel and free fall bombs. By 1963, NATO's response policy to the Soviet threat was in place. The bulk of the strategic responsibility was placed on the shoulders of the awesome American Boeing B-52s, a strategic air command. They were supported by batteries of medium range and intercontinental ballistic missiles. Europe's contribution to the nuclear deterrent rested solely with the V-Force. A tripwire policy meant that any Soviet aggression would be countered by a massive nuclear strike. The British bomber crews were always on instant readiness. Quick Reaction Alert, or QRA, was designed to disperse the aircraft to airfields around the UK. There, the crews would live either in readiness huts next to their aircraft or in the aircraft themselves. 